Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. There are a load of bug fixes coming to the Siege of Orison in the new Alpha 3.22.0 AEP2 patch that will go into live at some point in the very near future. There's new master mode updates planned for Alpha 3.23 later in Q1. CIG talk about some third party software that goes against their EULA or end user license agreement that allows you to slave turrets, but also generally what their stance is on stuff like this. Um, that's an interesting discussion actually. We're also going to be talking about unique ship serial numbers that people might be aware of, might not be aware of, naming ships, stuff like that as well. There is another new Star Citizen Alpha 3.22.0 A EPTU patch with the focus being on general stability and the Siege of Orison. Very focused on the Siege of Orison in fact. So with this patch they fixed a handful more bugs for the Siege event. Siege of Orison barge being missing on the admin platform, AI not leaving their uh, open spawn closets, anti-air not shutting down after disabling the iffy. They also fixed a client and two server crashes uh, and a server deadlock. They're also trying to track down a number of known issues, specifically Siege of Orison related, so they're actively investigating. AI still not leaving their spawn closets, they're just making sure that's that's working properly. Obviously there's some fixes for that, but it still happens. Uh, turrets do not spawn in the second consecutive run of the mission. Lieutenants can get stuck beneath the spawn locations. Shipping containers can be invisible. Island bosses can fail to spawn. Uh, AI will occasionally slide when moving in and out of cover in a weird way, and the siege mission isn't re-offered after logging back after a player is like crashing the desktop or whatever. CIG want to get as much of that nailed down, fixed, polished as possible before that patch goes to live because they're almost certainly going to be running Siege of Orison shortly after the patch drops. Really interested to know anyone's experiences with the latest EPTU patch if you've played on it, whether that be testing out the Siege of Orison or just generally how the patch feels for stability, accessibility, playability. There were a load of interesting spectrum threads and questions I wanted to go over as well with a load of dev responses. So there was a feedback thread for master mode updates and basically Yogi Clack posted on here that the master mode UI is out of date at the moment, but they've already updated it internally. And if everything manages to go right, we're gonna see that with and some newer assets in Alpha 3.23 later in Q1 with basically some master mode updates. So you can expect that and other bits for master modes in 3.23. 23. With the introduction of master modes, has there been any consideration to removing the auto aim was the question I saw. So aim assist, that's going to be a thing in Star Citizen. They want a reasonable skill floor and a high skill ceiling for a lot of this stuff. Uh, that's the sort of rough idea. And Yogi Clap from CIG gave some further clarification on that question. We're not set on the aim assist values yet. Personally, I'm not a big fan of reducing the aim assists too much because it will encourage players to ask for faster rotational accelerations so they can get more pixel accuracy, which then turns the combat model from flight-centric to aim-centric. But we're happy to try out more variations of this. As with a lot of stuff in Star Citizen, none of this is set in stone. It's going to be based on player feedback and the direction that's going is going to be based on the master mode tests that are currently ongoing that you can get um, sort of access to via Arena Commander and those experimental modes. Although master mode stuff testing not so experimental anymore, so they sort of um, made it so that's kind of permanently active. Turret slaving via third party software already in game was another thread I saw and this is really interesting because well, let's talk about it. So the OP in this thread says, personal Reddit just posted a video that showed uh, some software that he is able to use to slave a turret. It does require an extra computer and account, but he's able to put a pilot and turret weapons of the Scorpion under the control of just one mouse, essentially, slaving the turret to the pilot while the turret still has the advantage of the turret capacitors. Needless to say, this increases the ship's pilot DPS in a huge way. To me, this feels like cheating. Of course, at some point we might get an AI blade that sort of does the same until it is in game I don't take it as guaranteed as it has to be balanced but right now I don't think this should be allowed as it's third-party software to get an advantage now Niku CIG responded here hey everyone while you can have multiple accounts and run them on different PCs it is forbidden to use cheats automation software, bots, hacks, mods, or any other unauthorized third-party software designed to modify the game experience and or give you an advantage over other players, as detailed in our end-user license agreement. Cheers. So, 
let me give you my understanding. This sort of software that allows you to slave a turret allows you to um, use multiboxing to slave um, turrets in ships. That would be a violation. That's that's against the end user license agreement. That is not allowed. Um, you could technically multibox in the way that you could control multiple accounts from multiple PCs yourself. You could run around and do that manually from different PCs, um, as long as you're not using s sort of software to automate that to get an advantage or whatever that seems uh, like it doesn't go against the end user license agreement i don't know where macros fall in this it's basically do cloud imperium authorize it or not in a lot of situations so things like game glass that appears to be allowed by cag voice attack toby eye tracker those have been made official accepted they don't go against the end user license agreement because they're not unauthorized I can't remember what CIG have said about Reshade more recently as well, because Reshade, I know that they used to be okay with it, at the very least, because it gives you, like, really nice looking screenshots, and uh, some people like vibrant colours, it helps with sort of uh, people that have colourblind issues, things like that, but I have seen people use it to get some form of, like, night vision mode, or enhanced vision modes, that potentially could give you an advantage in game that you're not supposed to have. I am unsure on CIG's current stance on Reshade is what I'm trying to tell you. It's, it's an interesting one as well because I think they do allow it through or did allow it through the um, anti-cheat stuff they've got. I reckon it's worth poking CIG about it. I'll, I'll give them a message and ask them, uh, do, are you allowing Reshade? Is there a list somewhere that says all the stuff that is authorised that is third party? So interestingly, searching for Reshade on the support.robertspaceindustries website does come up with a couple of hits. And basically it says if you're having problems while running Reshade, but basically disable it if it's causing certain issues and uh, it can cause conflicts with some applications and things like that. So I would suspect at the moment Reshade is fine. That's certainly not a confirmation that it's always going to be fine though. Really interested to know your stance on that in the comments below. Please tell me. In the Ask the Dev section of Spectrum, there was a question here. Do devs actually respond here? And the OP said, if so, I must be lucky because every post I've looked at has answers from players and enthusiasts, but nothing from devs. M. Gibson CIG replied to this ironically. If users already have given an adequate answer to a thread, most devs don't reply. If the question is re a repetitive one, which has been answered before, most devs don't respond if nothing new is to be reported. These are the two main reasons I might not reply to a post. Another comment thing that sometimes stops me is a question starts specific and is something I want to respond to but then wanders across a few different disciplines and generally speaking we prefer to only comment on areas that are ours as when you talk about different other areas of development you can misspeak or set incorrect expectations or even explain it wrong as it's not the area you are specialized in. I totally agree with their response there that's totally fair right if someone else has already answered it why why respond and if it's been answered loads previously maybe you should get a mod to be able to just go answer us here answer us here i know that or, or an ai or something uh, i don't know is the future of moderation for forums ai hmm that's sort of a shower thought i say shower thought i'm obviously recording a video i'm not in the shower that'd be mad uh, ship and vehicle serial numbers i saw a little article on the star citizen support site uh, all ships have a unique serial number when acquired so when you buy a ship whether it be in game whether it be real money or whatever gets a serial number and some ships have the ability to be named as well, which is separate from the serial number, but all ships will basically show a serial number somewhere on them. Uh, in the future, all ships should be nameable too. That will appear on the hull. But yeah, ships have serial numbers. If you melt a ship and buy it back later, it will be a different serial number. Those serial numbers are unique, and I'm really hoping that people can use that to identify people in the future, the serial numbers on ships. Sort of some cool detective work, maybe. Anyway, boom! That's your Star Citizen updates today. I'm really interested to know, have you been playing in the 3.22.0a EP2 patches and the Siege of Orison play tests for the sort of updates and fixes there? What are your thoughts if you have? Are you looking forward to Siege of Orison being run again and hopefully getting a really good, smooth, not finalised Siege of Orison, but, you know, one that is a full, fun playthrough? Have you been testing out Master Modes in Arena Commander? What are you thinking of the direction that that's going? What do you think about third-party software and being able to slave your turrets and that sort of stuff? Do you think, well, actually, it's an alpha. I should be able to do that at the moment because that helps push the game in the direction where CIG know that this sort of stuff is wanted or is it cheating already you should be banned even if you're doing it in an alpha are you excited for further ship customization in the future and are you longing to name all of your ships not just a couple of them all of your questions or thoughts I would love to hear from you in the comments below 
the giant ape climbed the skyscraper, swatting at helicopters that harassed him. You look up at the massive 50-foot creature of muscle and hair. He's got you firmly in his grasp. Any more pressure and you'd snap like a twig. He brings you to his mouth. And then you realise you should have got yourself NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. It would have provided you security and anonymity, preventing the great ape from finding you, but also accessibility to some of your favourite shows. Check out the links below for a massive discount and to help support the channel. Do you like using your eye holes for extra immersion in Star Citizen and help aim and do some cool stuff? Well, you can with Toby Eye Track 5, which is on sale at the moment. This gives you native high precision head and eye tracking in Star Citizen. Very cool for general immersion, for combat both in ship or on foot. They are absolutely fantastic pieces of kit, and both Zin and I have one. Use the links below to grab one for 15% off or to find out more. Talking about supporting the channel, you can help by pressing that join button under my videos or even becoming a Patreon with the links below again. That goes a long way to helping us make daily Star Citizen content. A massive thank you to everyone that does that already or supports the channel in other ways like commenting, liking and sharing videos. We are just about to hit 200,000 subscribers, which is awesome seeing we are a niche Star Citizen dedicated channel. Every month we have a ship giveaway for January 2024. We are giving away a Drake Corsair. This is a very popular multi-role, multi-crew explorer ship that is very good at a huge range of stuff in the verse. It also comes with lifetime insurance and a game package. All you need to play Star Citizen and all you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during this month. More details in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out my channel and other videos on there as well, and I'll see you in the verse.